let's start. Thanks for joining. Uh, and um, we swapped topics. Uh, the uh, presenter couldn't make it. So uh, I'm here to talk about how we build uh, and test um, the auto automotive grade Linux. Uh, my name is Jan Simon Muller. I'm uh, doing the uh, release manager work for AGL and taking care of the infrastructure side. Um, so, oh, should turn it on. What's AGL? So, in principle, it's a Linux distribution for automotive. We use the Octo project and Open Embedded, and we create a platform which can be used for multiple device profiles. IVI right now, telematics in the queue, um, so a platform for Linux in automotive. Our goal is open source and code first. Um, and we support multiple architectures, like for x86, the Mino board is a, is a reference platform for ARM32, the Renesas Porter, um, and ARM64, Dragon board is a nice candidate here. And I've seen Matt Porter uh, posted on G+, Raspberry Pi 3 with 64 bits. So yay, that might be also an interesting. Um, target here. So um, why we do what we do, um, what tools we use, how we combine them, and what we want to achieve with that, uh, well, call it stack. So um, our contributors, our developers, are distributed around the globe. Yeah, we have participators from Japan, yeah, so Asia. We have in Europe contributors in the US. So uh, basically, all the time zones are involved. Um, we have uh, a public code review, um, as, my, as many projects do. Well, what we find out now, well, in the code review process, yeah, I can stare at the code, right? But, uh, and say, yeah, it looks perfectly good. I do that kind of every day and say, yeah, it works. And um, yeah, it builds fine, but it breaks on board N. Yeah. Um, and we need to find that early and as you have seen during the conference, that actually must be a quite common problem. There were a lot of good talks during ELCE. There are multiple ways to skin the cat here, which is good, uh, because we can have different use cases and, um, well, special needs here. So in the next slides, I will describe what we have set up, which kind of we think does the trick for our requirements or for what we want to achieve. If you have ideas or say, yeah, wait a minute, but that could be better like that, please, patch is welcome. So what tools do we use? Um, well, pretty much a standard set. Well, Garrett, yes. We picked Garrett, sorry, Greg, um, for CI builds. We use Jenkins. Um, there are other systems there, yeah. For example, GoCD, pick your weapon, yeah. Um, for the tests on the hardware, actually, we, right now we use two, and I will tell you um, for which part of the game we use which. One is AGL JTA, which is basically Fuego, and Lava. And, um, Kind of the big, well, work in progress target is how do we kind of post-process all the data we basically gather then. Yeah, so that's in most cases still a question mark or being worked on. So, well, Garrett, um, 
you can quickly take a look at git automotive linux .org, um, over here, number two. And we have our main projects um, all within slash AGL. So hopefully the Wi-Fi works. Yep. So everything that's prefixed with AGL, that's our main projects. And um, let me switch back. Um, we have a few repos where we are the upstream that's in source and we have, well, some scratch space where we want to try stuff out, poke at patches that's in staging. Um, for the main part, we use repo to pull down the repositories. Yeah. Now, basically, if, if, we, if we want to support all of these boards as we, um, as we want to, so we have the reference platforms, which are right now the blue ones that you can see, um, ARM, x86 hardware and an emulator target, which is good to have for uh, quick boot tests or for tests where, which we can do on an emulator uh, in the automation. And the green ones, which are our community platforms, um, you see that matrix starts to grow. Yeah? And if we want to see that it works on each board, um, then you basically have to test all these. That's nothing I can do yeah, on my desk because, well, number of boards uh, times number of tests yeah, times cups of coffee I drink in between, that would maybe work a day, but not on the second day because I didn't sleep all night. Um, the CI builds happen in, in a Jenkins. And uh, we have, um, we use standard plugins here. So Garrett Trigger plugin is used uh, to pull our Git repos and uh, we use the OpenStack Cloud plugin, so we are in a cloud, for spinning up the minions. And all of the minions run off an identical base image, um, so we get reproducible, a reproducible build environment, always the same build environment. And to keep track of our CI jobs, we do that with Jenkins Job Builder. Now, again, there are multiple ways to skin a cat here. You could also use, uh, for example, um, the um, Jenkins Job DSL. That's what uh, Alexander described in his talk. Um, like a couple of hours ago. Uh, so there is no single way here to set this up. Now, Jenkins will give us the verified um, flag back to Garrett. So either verified plus one, verified minus one. And in our setup, no, bill, uh, no, co no change goes in if we don't have the verified. Yeah? Um, so basically, whatever we append to that chain um, for the CI build, um, which can be initially quite simple. Yeah? Yay, it builds. Uh, up to, uh, it builds, boots, run, runs, passes all tests, updates cleanly, uh, and shutdowns properly. That's an interesting test which quite often fails, as I've seen on a couple of boards. Um, so pick your um, criteria here. At the moment, um, we are at the stage where it basically builds, boots, and to some extent passes tests. Yeah, so we are basically in the middle of that chain. Well, tests on hardware. Um, well, are they hard? Hmm. You need the hardware. Yeah. Um, for 
our community boards, that's relatively easy. Yeah, you can get a Raspberry for a couple of bucks or um, Beagle, Beagle boards. Um, now for the hardware in automotive, it might be a little harder. Um, usually you need it on your desk and on your lap, right? You need to have it close to you and be able to juggle the SD cards. Um, that's quite time consuming. You need to deploy the firmware. You need to reboot the board um, and run the tests, collect the results, well, interpret the results, right? Uh, and then rinse, repeat for either the next board, for the next change. That is quite tedious and time consuming. So how can we automate that? Um, here you see an example that's uh, set up with uh, six beagle bones actually. Uh, and uh, they can all be powered. They get their um, file system over network. So that's how we can automate that in the end. And as we have seen today and yesterday, uh, I just picked a couple of pictures from uh, slides that uh, from, from talks of this conference. Um, that is, there is a pattern, yeah, we see more and more of those automated labs here. And uh, which is good because that drives the process that helps us to ensure the uh, quality of our code. Um, if you are interested in such a lab setup, um, I'm in the process of documenting the setup that I use, and we have also documentation for JTA and Fuego. Uh, just watch our uh, wiki page that's here in the end. Um, speaking about links, the slides are not on online yet. Yeah, they were just finished 10 minutes ago because it was really on short notice. Uh, they will be on the, on the website soon. Um, yeah, so what tests and frameworks do we use? Um, we use AGLJTA, um, which is in principle a, a modified Fuego, and um, we modified it to uh, run tests on the uh, on one of our reference boards, the porter, and uh, we are building up the whole chain. There's an instant live jta.automotivelinux.org um, over here. This one. And um, that instance here is able to run uh, a battery of tests, battery of benchmarks, functional tests. That's all built in, and uh, we have our test sequence encoded in here. Um, it produces quite a lot of results. Uh, it embeds a large number of tests. And we collect right now the results in a Git repo um, and uh, push up for each revision, for each change set, we get a commit in the Git repo. What's good about that? We have the large set of tests that come with JTA. Um, it's basically a Jenkins under the hood, so we have quite a few post-processing capabilities. We can use all the plugins that exist for Jenkins. Um, so that's, uh, that gives us quite some power to uh, post-process the results or do things uh, based on the tests. Um, a little hard is the installation. Well, I have a note here. It comes as um, basically a, a container, a Docker file, so you basically set up a container. Um, um, 
you still have to inject the board information, the tool chain and such. Yeah, so it's not completely turnkey yet. Um, we still had to modify things um, which um, means we have to uh, in or well we have to modify the Jenkins job XML file XML files um, because we ba the the jobs are basically encoded right in Jenkins XML config files yeah so um, I'm not really good at encoding stuff in XML. That's not how my brain works. So that might, that's, well, that might be just me and my blinders here. Um, FYI, just this week I finished a, a command line tool to allow you to inject stuff into the XML. So. Looking forward to it. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Um, so that's where we can improve, right? Um, one assumption is that the board is close to the Jenkins. Yeah, basically Jenkins wants SSH access to the board and Jenkins needs to be able to power the board on and off. Yeah, so that's, that means basically I have, well, right now there, there are two, two sides of the story. In company, well, fine. Yeah, you, you just put your boards close to your small machine that runs the Jenkins. Now with the project hat on, uh, for the project we would host that somewhere. Yeah, how do we get the boards there? Yeah, problem. Yeah, Log logistics and problem wise. So uh, that's a little bit problematic for kind of the project side. Yeah, to use it uh, in-house that's perfectly fine, you set it up. Whatever uh, uh, trigger is used, so basically JTI would be triggered, either it would pull Garrett again, or it could be triggered by your CI build. Yeah. And that's what we do right now. We, um, we let our CI build trigger a test run. Um, also, the boards are basically set up as Jenkins slaves. So at the moment, I would only be able to use one porter board. Well, or I would have to set up a new slave called porter one. Yeah, yes, that's possible, yeah, but the, then I have to clone the configuration files again, so that's not there out of the box. There is no notion of a board type versus a single board of that type. Now, we also use Lava. Um, you might ask, what's not the difference? Well. Lava is now very good at managing your board farm. Yeah? So it basically knows a class of devices and you can add multiple boards to this type, device type. Um, so we can manage multiple boards, which helps us then also to run the tests in parallel yeah? once we get multiple builds at the same time. It basically grabs uh, a board from the pool, from the pool will power it up, boot it, test it. It can uh, deal with the bootloader and so on. Um, it can also execute tests, yeah. But the tests are do not come as part of Lava. There's a test repo. Basically, you have a you have a kind of a test shell in here. Whatever you run there, well, let's say different story. There is a Git repo which we can reuse. Um, so um, uh, we can also run tests there. As I said, we can do multiple boards per board type. A remote lab is work in progress with the rewrite. So we can have kind of satellite um, dispatchers. So we have one 
hosted instance, the master, and we can have dispatches where the boards are connected. That, no, the rewrites now in a state where that works and the rewrites usable. Yeah. So if you installs, that should be a lot easier than with V1. Yeah, yeah. Y yes, that's true. Uh, I just didn't find the uh, um, documentation for the remote sites. The installation procedures. Look at, look at Okay, um, then reference these, please. Um, so remote lab, that, that's what, what's especially interesting because in the end, um, uh, basically each developer has his one or two boards and it would be nice if we can pool them um, to run tests on them. Uh, what even works is that uh, you can stick it onto a Raspberry Pi, Pi face on top, so you have your relays for the powering uh, serial connectors on maybe a, a network switch, and that will be already enough to uh, run two boards. Um, this setup, um, the initial setup if you follow the instructions, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you have to have a, a Debian, and then you can just pull it down from the packages. Um, the configuration files, the templates for the, um, for the boards, um, probably start from one of the existing ones and modify it until it matches your boards. And I didn't find the dock for the satellite, but yeah, true. I pulled down the slides, but I didn't have time to look at them. So, kernel CI, I will, I will look at it. Um, yeah, so that's what we have active right now. Um, that's porter automotivelinux.org over here. Uh, you can go to it. Basically, um, that is the uh, setup as described, Raspberry plus um, Relay connected to one of the boards. So the, the docs are here. Uh, I keep track of uh, an example installation. Uh, as I redo it now with V2, so thanks for the, for the hint. Um, and I will update the first, uh, the document and the first link as I go, go through it then, probably Saturday. Um, and uh, for Fuego, we have, for the AGL JTA and Fuego, we have a document um, in the docs folder. So there's a complete PDF uh, how to uh, install the container and then configure it. Um, and if you have questions about setting that one up, just send, send it to the mailing list, we will jump in. Um, for the whole thing, we have also a wiki page. So basically, uh, a simple setup is basically less than 100 euros or bucks, um, depending if you count the device under test um, in or not, plus minus. Um, so that's the minimal setup, actually. Well, you can even, you can go bigger. So, um, post-processing. As I said, right now we collect the test reports as they fall out of the tools, as they fall out of uh, Adriel JTA. Can we then post-process post -process them uh, well, better create trends, graphs, yeah, because the raw data might not be meaningful uh, per se, yeah, unless we look at them with um, a pair of eyes and say, yeah, that's interesting. So how do we find out of this data set um, the uh, hotspots or can we find trends? So that's an interesting topic um, to work on and also what data do we want to track? Yeah. Um, one example, um, kernel CI uh, 
you guys do, do great work. Um, you track a lot of boot reports, right? Um, um, for us, in our case, we might want to track, well, can the board send can, mes can messages? So uh, on top of that. So what's our, what's our key indicators that you want to track? In the end, um, we want to give our developers um, a fast feedback. Um, so in our Garrett, we added, um, beside the code review and the verified that comes from Jenkins, we added, added a couple of fields uh, which um, will then get their tick um, as the process passes. Um, well, image build, um, as simplest case, we have, for example, a simple boot test, some small, short test runs attached, and we have the full um, test pass that is, in, in our case, uh, AGL, JTA, or Fuego, basically. Um, and that is, uh, the goal is that the developers need, need to see what's going on. Yeah? Does it pass on all devices? Because, well, in reality, you test it, you test one build, for example, QMO, you test it for, it for the device that you have in front of your nose, and yeah, it works, but more often we have seen that, well, it for sure it will fail on one of the other targets, yeah, especially if you manipulate recipes around graphics or if you manipulate recipes around, well, system D or whatever else, yeah, if, you, if we have to do tweaks there. So, how we combine them? At the moment, um, we have this setup over here. Um, as I said, Garrett Jenkins for the builds. Um, JTA for running the tests, and at the moment, we get the board through Lava. Yeah, so Jenkins will basically uh, push a job to Lava, request the board, and uh, access it then. Um, it runs the battery of tests and um, we get the messages back in Garrett. Yeah, plan is to have those remote labs, which um, we should be able to do now. And um, also, we have in mind to uh, look into uh, uh, adding SPDX to the build, so, but that's mainly a build issue that doesn't have to do that much with the uh, testing. Now, long term, we might just um, brainstorm and say, let's see, if we look at how the SDKs develop, yeah, if you look at the Yocto project uh, with the uh, ext uh, extensible SDK um, with the uh, crops system, basically tool chain in a container, remote API to the tool chain. Uh, if you look at uh, Eclipse G, kind of your IDE in the browser, well, you end up with kind of an environment where the developer sits on the web browser, doesn't have the compiler on his machine at all, and writes the code and then, yeah, code, save, build. Um, so um, the idea is that we can build the um, application, whatever. Um, for example, in such a web IDE, build, click another button and we, for example, get a job in Lava that will run the binary and test it on the board. Another idea is um, what about the UI? UI testing is another interesting topic, but probably a big um, one on its own. Um, there are systems out there. One of them is OpenQA. Um, in principle, they run virtual machines. 
they uh, take snapshots of the VNC and you predefine, um, well, targets that need to be reached. Yeah. Uh, that's basically how it works. You can imagine if we work with sort of snapshots, um, that's uh, a lot of work to create those slap snapshots. Well, maybe, let's see. Um, so, oops, what we want to achieve um, in the end, stable and test the platform where we can build upon on a wide range of devices. Uh, we want to give fast feedback to our developers. Uh, we work remotely, yeah, and we are at conferences like ELCE and, oh, wait a minute, does it work? Yes, no. Um, and um, that will help um, to speed this up. And if we look ahead how the SDKs develop, um, the testing should uh, keep pace here. Uh, otherwise, well, everything goes on over here and we have to stop and put it through all the tests again. All right. Questions? All right, thanks for joining. And uh, if you are interested in those topics, send an email to our mailing list, Automotive Discussions. And uh, if you have ideas, please, thank you.